Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to a to day two of a one day build. I seem to have I seem to have a habit of doing this to you, so well there. It is what it is. This guitar is a baritone guitar. We designed it in a live stream a few weeks ago now. It is being done entirely in aid of the British Red Cross DEC Ukraine appeal. On top of that, this instrument is being raffled off. 90% of all of the raffle money is going to the appeal. The other 10% is also fees. It's incredible. You guys are incredible. Last week, I was fully expecting to do this in one day. I've done it before. I've done it many times, actually, at least three. I've been playing around. I've got some ideas on the inlay. Uh, we've run some tests and, uh, well, it is what it is. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> Hold on, that reminds me entirely. Now, uh, as I talk, I'm actually going to start declamping this. <sighs> I This is going to be the last live stream on the main channel. Now, we do have the Crimson Guitars Extras channel. It has 10,500 subscribers. We, I will still be doing the exact same thing. I will still be doing live stream builds on the Extras channel every single week. And I think it's probably still going to be Mondays even. So yeah, if you are not yet subscribed to the Crimson Guitars Extra channel, then please go and do that. Tidy up as you go. Yep, the blue and yellow has worked. I'm happy with that. Okay, so this, this guitar body is, I mean, pretty much well on the way to being there. I need to sort out the bridge position, I need to sort out the neck pocket uh, and, and route out the humbuckers and all that. Uh, the neck is currently sitting at an unfretted state and an uninlaid state on top of that. And uh, we'll then after the inlay and the fretting we're going to have to um, cut away the excess and carve and do all that. I think that it would behoove us to crack on with the inlay because there's going to be a little bit of delay uh, involved in the, the way that we do it. So I'm going to take this off and uh, put it on a piece of aluminium. Relatively thin, should cut quite easily. Obviously this is the trident of Ukraine. Fimo, Fimo. I call it Fimo, I'm always going to call it Fimo. What I did uh, yesterday, ran a few tests inside of the aluminium, you put it in the oven at 130 degrees and uh, you, you cook it off and that's that's where we ended up. Uh, and yeah, it, it works nicely. So I'm going to play with this and maybe try and pop this one out and have the Crimson logo a little bit later. I'm going to cut a section out of this large chunk and then we're going to cut this shield out and then cut the internals out. Now it would be easier if I marked it directly onto onto the aluminium or scribed it onto the aluminium and then I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to cut the inside pieces out first and then the plan is I'm going to fill all of these cavities with the yellow and the blue. Yeah, that's worked out quite nicely. I can see, uh, yeah, who needs a laser cutter? We, uh, we, we, we all sell do. yours then, shall we? Shush. <laughs> <laughs> we all need laser cutters. I want to tidy it up a little bit. Where I had already cut last week, my lines aren't quite as good, as nice as I would like. Yeah, that's the line that I messed up. You ready? That's absolutely fine. A little bit of chalk if you're struggling to see these things. This isn't chalk, this is wax. What do you want about that? With a side benefit that uh, that's going to lubricate the uh, saw blade and make it cut easier.
This is thicker material than I wanted to work with. <laughs> yeah, this is going to take a little while, people. When this blade breaks, I'll swap over to a thicker one. Yeah. So yeah, the blade got stuck, the aluminium uh, bound. I need more lubrication and also a chunkier blade. Saw blades. Don't skimp on saw blades. Seriously. And then I've got some of this amazing bow lube developed by Boeing. Um, I got this through the vintage tool shop at some point. It's probably just a microcrystalline wax or something, but uh, yeah, I like it. So there we go. There we go. I'm not, I'm not putting very much pressure on the blade. I'm not pushing forward very much. Um, it is truly the old adage, let the tool do the work. Aha! One, two, three, four, five. I've only got five more of these blades here. Okay, super chat here from John Drake. John. He says, hello Ben and Tanya, Hi. so happy to catch a live stream. Thank you for the wonderful content. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for your support. <clears throat> and don't forget that from next week, it's going to be over on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel. So please, um, yeah, please go and subscribe to that and we will uh, hopefully see you there. Chunky. All right, so while it's in this stage, I'm going to just do a little bit of, little bit of filing. Okay. What I need to do is just cut away the entirety of these sections, save the inside pieces, glue this onto a backing plate, piece of paper would do, something like that, and then glue those in so that everything is right, and then fill it with the fiber. Okay, super chat from Gody the Roadie. Gody! Hardware improvements would have to be Evertune and Electrics. There would be Fishman. I don't think anything has come close to being more modern. Okay, so Evertune is great. I haven't physically used one, even though I do have an eight-string Evertune bridge that I need to use. Um, concentrate on not breaking this blade. Uh, so, so yeah, Evertune is an option. Uh, it's overly complex in my opinion, but uh, it really does what it says it does, and that's quite impressive. But yes, electronics is the biggest issue. So I'm cutting on the outside line of the internal sections that I wanted to keep. doing this fairly closely and I'm 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 I'm, I'm kind of rushing this process uh, I do want to uh, I do want to finish the guitar today if possible uh, but but it's honest shall we say
Oops. It's a bit bigger. It's fine. So the Trident is looking handmade. There's some variation in these pieces here. And that's fine by me. Let's do all the bits that we can with this one file, then move on to a small half round when we need it. And now you've got the little pieces that all need to be just tidied up just a little bit. Okay, so the other option here is for me to, to grab a jeweler's clamp like that. That beautiful. That's for holding rings. And uh, use that to hold the piece while I go. Here's where we're at. Yeah, let's carry on with these pieces then. being a little bit less precise than I normally would. Um, in the interests of, of time. Okay. So, this one here, I'm going to take down and make it a little bit shorter. Once I'm happy with the shape, which is I'm nearly there with this, I'm going to glue it all to a piece of veneer or a piece of plastic or something like that. So that these pieces don't, oh no, it can't be a piece of plastic. This is going to be going through, a, uh, through an oven in a second. There we go. <laughs> At this stage, uh, we're two hours into the build. I have cut out the aluminium section of the Ukraine Trident coat of arms. I'm going to be playing with Fimo, which is going to go into the oven in a little while and cook. And we're going to have the blue to yellow gradient. Well, not even a gradient, just blue to yellow that, uh, that we want. And uh, it's going to look incredibly cool. I'm wondering if I can actually make that delineate at a freight line. That could be quite cool. I am going to glue this to a section of paper. We'll just stick it to the back of the masking tape and then once we've mushed the FIMO in place we will be okay. So essentially I need to make absolutely certain I'm happy with the positioning of all of this stuff. Because I'm actually going to put the tape on from this side and turn it over. Everything moved. All right, so that's taped down. And these are watchmaker's tweezers. Oh, I only broke four blades. So I was uh, under on my, uh, on my estimates earlier. I'm going to put some gloves on. They're cheering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm not going to be able to do this on a fret. It's going to be bang in the middle of the fret, isn't it? So here's my 12th fret. That's where the inlay is going to be. This honestly feels like I'm back in uh, kindergarten. It's great.
This is basically a, an oven-fired rubberized clay that uh, yeah, works nicely. I think this is taking a little bit of the uh, colour off the gloves, which I'm not, uh, not happy with. So obviously this is moving some bits around, but I need to be able to see what's happening. I'm confident that we have everything where we want it to be. I'm going to flip it over to the other side. I'm happy with that. Back to a glove with the blue. This blue gloves going on to blue FIMO is going to be fine. There we go. Now the interesting thing, I'm sure some of you are, are, are interested, are, are questioning it. Uh, the once it's cured, or while it is in the oven doing its doing its thing, it actually expands a little bit. Uh, Tanya and I last night were worried that it would contract and shrink, um, which is what I would expect, to be honest. But that's, uh, no, it, it expands and, uh, uh, yeah, it's cool. You can use this to make side dots. If you want multicolored side dots, you can use it to make all sorts of stuff. It's when cooked properly, it's plastic in the end, but it's relatively durable. And for small inlays and things, I think it's, uh, it's absolutely fine. I find it important uh, in between tasks and uh, at every opportunity to tidy up your immediate vicinity and just uh, get back to just get back to a, a something approaching normality. Okay, so we've got I don't want dust and stuff getting in here. So, but I also do need to be able to uh, sand the top and, and and get that done. So instead of the masking tape that was on it, I'm just stuffing this with uh, tissue that will then pull out and will be sorted. And it's just a case of drawing around. So I left this fairly big so that I would be able to sand down or cut down to the uh, to the line through the joints and this gives you a much cleaner uh, glue joint between the top and the body and uh, something about redwood I seem to recall is that you you can end up with uh, accentuated glue lines where the the wood glue basically stains the redwood and uh, yeah I was just wondering if this would reduce that Let's shut that door get these on Okay, so I generally, I generally don't need to wear goggles when I'm using band saws. In this case though, you've got lovely little bullet shaped sections of glue on the side that uh, <clears throat> wanted to ping everywhere. Now I'm gonna crack on with the, with sanding the edge down and finalizing this shape. And that will be done uh, on the Triton oscillating spindle belt sander. On we go.
Okay, so you saw, you saw. I had the belt set up, did most of what I wanted to do. I then went to a slightly finer, um, large spindle. Spindle, there we go. Because uh, from where my, my where the tool is, etc., I couldn't get into this from that edge. And uh, I wanted to be able to push it in like that. So we ended up going a slightly finer route and uh, it's all, it's all good. I need to finalize the geometry of the back of this neck. I need to chop that off. I need to sort out the depth, etc., before I do any routing on the body. Uh, and before I even mark out the body, because you know, it's a problem. So that is enough of the body work for now. That's where that's gonna sit. I got that centered precisely to within a half of a millimeter. I'm just gonna actually just mark around the outside with a scalpel, because that's what we need to do anyway. There's no point in relocating it later. I have marked out where that needs to go. Now this has cured nice and hard. Now this isn't a material that I've used very much before. Hell, Talitha, you have a lot more experience with fibre than I do. Yeah, it's great fun to use and easy to carve once it's cooked. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to just take it down to see which is the best side. As you can see, I've lost a section in there. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, inlay this into the guitar, glue it all down, and then route out a section or see where we end up, basically. Okay, so uh, work holding is important. Always have uh, what you're working on uh, solidly locked down so that it can't move. You can see that I'm struggling a little bit with dust. And uh, that's absolutely fine because, hey, I'm creating shavings. What you need to do is uh, take a small section of masking tape, discard most of it because we live in a profligate and wasteful society. And then basically I'm gonna make a masking tape propeller on the blade and that's going to go thwack 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 around create a downdraft and it's going to blow all of this out of my way woohoo I'm being very gentle here because uh, this wood here is weak and I don't particularly want to stab myself in the stomach either. 
I've now got it fitting very nice. It's just not quite deep enough. So I'm going to crack on with the router again and reduce it down. I don't want to have to file away more of this than I can. Do not cut corners. Do not cut corners. Just don't even think about cutting corners. This is, this is not right. The thing moved and it's not ideal. So I'm going to uh, remove the yellow section. Hell, I could actually probably redo the entire thing. You can see where those are now too far away. So I'm just gonna restart with this. And uh, it sucks a little bit, but uh, what can we do? Have a fantastic week. Goodbye. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> you guys are amazing. I really appreciate your support. And uh, we're doing some amazing things here. Um, together.